Uh, the markets have gone kind of crazy here. Things you don't usually see coming into a recession. If we look back at the last one, okay, coming into 2007, stocks peaked in early October, but bonds, TLT, the 20 year bond average, treasury bonds, basically started to turn up ahead of stocks. So bonds saw, the, the quality bonds, the treasury bonds saw the recession first and then stocks. And, and, and you know, stocks were ahead because the recession didn't start until very early 2008 and then it was the deepest we've seen since 1982 or, or 30 to 32. So what's happening this time is TLT is going down, down, down. This should not happen except what really happened here is the central banks, even though they've been getting away with murder, stimulating, stimulating, unprecedented, nonstop stimulus all the way back to early 2009. The markets haven't punished them for this, okay, particularly, but they went overboard in COVID, okay? As I've been saying, you know, they panicked and, and $10 trillion, half of it fiscal, which is more inflationary and half of it monetary, um, and, and so we do have serious inflation. And, and again, this inflation is entirely artificial for the first time due to stimulus, okay? My inflation indicator is the best in the world that I know of, and it says inflation should be more like 1% as it has been coming into this. So this jump up to over 9% and now back to like 8.3-ish, um, that's the problem with the markets here. Inflation is the highest we've seen in a long time and it, it is stubborn. It is not backing off even with this initial tightening. And it means the Fed's gonna have to keep tightening and that's not good for stocks. And it means a slowing which will bring risk-free rates, treasury rates down to near zero on the 10 year. But guess what? The markets are still reacting particularly treasury bonds, TLT, is still reacting to the high and stubborn inflation. It obviously is saying, after the Fed just raised rates three quarters of a point, 0.75%, it wasn't enough. I, I was surprised that they didn't even predict that 1% would have been on the table. It was like, oh, 80% chance of a, of a 75 basis point hike and then 20% roughly of a, of a 50 basis points. I, I just thought a, a slam dunk would have been 1%. Show your, you know you're behind and, and show you're serious about inflation. But you know, the markets are saying it wasn't enough The markets don't like what's happening. So TLT is our prime place to be uh, and the least volatile as well that, that rallies and does well in a worsening recession. Uh, now, TLT peaked at 179.70, okay, all the way back in March 2020, in COVID time, just when COVID was hitting, okay, uh, and then, then it bounced again and went up to 155.12, so 155 uh, in December, early December of 2021. It's been falling ever since. It, 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 went, it broke uh, my megaphone pattern. And we warned people there's only a minor break at first, not that serious, you could hold if you want, uh, but, but you do want to get back in if it goes down and then can go back and, and steadily be above 107, which is really where the support is. Now, when I look at it having broken, it looks like it's going to be down to 104, 30, 40, 50. So down in the 104 range this morning when the market's open, uh, this is coming before that, um, so what is the real support? The real support all the way back to uh, uh, 2012, early 2013 is 101. That's where the market should find strong support. So people who got out of TLT or looking to get into, that would be the obvious point. If you wanna be even more safe, let it go down, test that level if we get that low or maybe a little lower and wait until it comes back above uh, this 107 level where it really should have hold. I mean, it really should have held here and it didn't. So that just shows that we have extreme inflation from extreme stimulus in the last two years since COVID. So again, the, the central banks and the Fed have been able to get away with murder, have not been punished by the market for endlessly printing money, but they are being punished now, okay? And, and, and so they are going to have to keep raising rates 
aggressively uh, to get the stock market to come down more and to get the economy to slow. And again, what the markets are saying, they know a recession's coming. Everybody thinks a recession's coming now, but the markets are still more worried about inflation than recession at this point. And there will be that subtle point when that changes. That is gonna change. And it's probably gonna happen very soon that all of a sudden the markets will say, okay, the Fed now is tight enough or looked like they're gonna tighten enough that we are gonna slow and then inflation will go down more aggressively. So that's what we're looking for. And, 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 and this is a, a tough time. I, I think TLT is gonna be a super buy again at 101. Uh, if, you're, if you didn't get out, I think at this point, we're only talking $3 on the downside if it opens up around 104 something today. So it, it may really be too late to get out. Uh, but people who are out can either get back in at 101. That's the most aggressive play here. That's probably the cheapest you'll ever see it. And, and or a little more safe, wait till it can clear back over 107 again and, and show it can hold that level. Because remember, the target on the upside through the tops in the last several years is still 196. So number one, this is the most volatile time ever in treasury bonds. There's, there's not a time I can go back in history. This is the biggest fall from, from uh, 180 down to 104 is here and maybe as low as 101, probably likely ahead. And it'll be the biggest rally if we go from 101 or 104 here up to 196 in the next year and a half. And that, that's what the charts say. Now charts aren't perfect, but that's my best bet. We'll never see a buying opportunity in the highest quality bonds, long-term bonds, 10 and 30 treasuries ever again in your lifetime. There hasn't been one in the past and there will not be one in the future. So big opportunity. Apologize for the people that have gotten TLT and, and have been beat up here, but I don't think there's much more downside and the upside is huge. And of course, stocks, remember, they've seen their first wave down. They bounced and retraced 50% of the time saying perfect first wave down. I would have liked to see it be a little more, 40% in the, in the NASDAQ instead of 34. That's the lead dog here. But stocks do look like they've started their third wave down. And as soon as they break convincingly to new lows uh, over the June lows, then we're going to be well into wave three and the stock market's going to be down 50 to 60% by early next year. And then people are going to know for sure that we are in the, the downturn, the crash of our lifetime and it still will have another big wave at least to go down 86 percent down on the on the s p is what is my forecast for stocks and 92 percent for the nasdaq from their highs no nasdaq peaked in november 22nd 2021 and the, and the s p uh january 4th so stocks are going to go down much more bonds are going to have the rally, only the highest quality treasury bond, not corporate bonds. You know, triple A's may do okay, but you want to be in 10 and 30 year treasury bonds. Zeroz is the most leveraged 25 year average, as I've been touting, and TLT is 20 year average and the most liquid and, and easiest to trade. So again, rally in a lifetime for bonds, crash of your lifetime in stocks. Bonds are about to start, stocks are well on their way. I'll keep you updated.